Now, how do we classify the joints depending on their anatomy? How do they look like? What are the factors or the, um, the features of these joints that we're going to take in consideration when we're going to classify these joints? We're going to look at two things. We're going to see, uh, first, what is the material that is joining these two bones together? Is that connective tissue? Is it cartilage? What it is? Is nothing in between? That's one of the items that we're going to consider. And the second item is that we're going to see the joint and we're going to see, okay, are these bones touching each other? or there is a space or a cavity in between the two bones. So according or depending on these two factors, we're going to classify structurally the joints into fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial joints. In this video, I'm going to explain to you the fibrous and cartilaginous uh, joints. And for the rest of this uh, video lecture, uh, we are going to talk only about the synovial joints. Uh, these are the, the ones that we're going to be um, uh, emphasizing in this um, chapter. Now, let's start then with fibrous joint. So remember these two factors, right? We said, well, depending on the material that is joining the bones. In this case, in fibrous joints, what do you guess we have? Fibers. What is that type of tissue that has a lot of fibers? A great amount of fibers and just a little bit of matrix. What is that? Yes, dense, regular connective tissue. It's usually a ligament, right? So that's our, or, or that's the material that is joining these two um, bones. Now, look at these three pictures. These are examples of fibrous joints. And do you see how the bones are touching each other, right? In here, in here, these three bones are touching each other. In here, I'll explain later. But the thing is that there's no space in there. So this, the material, the fibrous material, is filling the space that is... Uh, uh, that existed between the two bones. That's the two characteristics of fibrous joints. We have three types of this. The first one are the sutures. You're familiar with this already. Remember, they're present on the skull and those are the joints that keep together two or more uh, skull bones. And of course, these uh, dense, regular connective tissue, the fibers, the collagen fibers present in here, are so short that uh, so we can keep very closely together these two bones uh, and they because of that they allow no movement so if you want to put the sutures into one of the functional classification groups that we explained on the previous videos where do you put that where would you put that is that a synarthrosis is that diarthrosis or is an amphrothrosis you got it. It's a synarthrosis. We have no movement at that type of joint. We're talking about an, a chronop, right? Uh, the second type, let's see the second picture. These are syndesmoses. Now we're going to see this syn, S-Y-N prefix repeating over and over and over again during uh, this chapter, during joints. And this prefix means uh, to put together what do you do when you, let's make a synthesis. Let's uh, do something synchronous. Uh, so synchronous, synthesis, uh, there's no words are coming to my mind right now, but it's just to do it at the same time, to put it together, okay? And that's what syn means, uh, means, I'm sorry. So syndesmosis is another type of fibrous joint and you can see what is in here and you can identify, if I tell you identify this structure, you can tell me what it is, right? Let's see, it's a dense regular connective tissue and it's joining one bone to another bone. How do you call that? A ligament. So 
joints that are kept together by ligaments and usually these ligaments are short uh they're short but of course the fibers are longer than the sutures uh so that's a syndesmosis i put another example in here do you remember how in the forearm the radius and the ulna are uh, they have in between the intermembranous uh, interosseous membrane that's another ligament that's another type of syndesmosis and these joints or these bones are joined proximally and distally using syndesmosis same thing here in the tibia and the fibula uh, we have here the ligament distally joining these two bones together at the tibiofibular joint same thing is happening proximally and in between we have the inter uh, osseous membrane so all of these are examples of syndesmosis uh, now these as i told you these fibers these collagen fibers are a little bit longer than the ones that we described on the sutures so these ones allow a little bit more of movement they're not diarthrosis yet but we can classify them as an amphiarthrosis. Let's move to the last example. In here, we can see, well, there's not, not actually two pieces of bones. We usually a joint, right? I told you before, there is when two or more bones meet together. Well, in here is one bone and a tooth, uh, which is similar, but it's not the same tissue. So, the articulation between a tooth and its socket either in the maxilla or in the mandible is a, uh, a type of fibrous joint that is called convulsus. The way oh, I'm covering that. Okay, let me move my camera a little bit here. Okay, convulsus. The way I remember that is gums, mm -hmm. your gums. So that's a convulsus, a tooth attach by a ligament into the socket or the alveolar process of the man, uh, maxilla and mandible. And in here, all of these stripes in here, all of these lines are showing you the uh, periodontal ligament, which is the, uh, the, the fibrous aspect of this joint. Okay. That's it with fibrous joints. Oh, I'm sorry. What type of joint is that if we want the gonfosis, if we want to classify it as a functional or under the functional classification? Is that a diarthrosis? Can we move it? Well, when we're little, yeah. Uh, and the tooth fairy came and gave us money. Those were the days. Now we have to work for that. Uh, is that an amphiarthrosis? At some points, they, they at some point they were when during the childhood, um, but honestly, what they are, joking aside, is a sane arthrosis. They do not move. At least they're not supposed to. Um, so they are sane arthrosis. Sutures, gonfosis or sane arthrosis, syndesmosis or amphiarthrosis. Ha! I told you you had to have those blue concepts ready from the previous video lecture. If they are not, stop this video, go back, watch it again, and I'll, I'll wait you back here. I'll wait for you back here. Okay, second type. We said we have fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial. We already described fibrous, let's go to cartilaginous. Cartilaginous, what do you think we said? Okay, depending on the material that is binding this, these two bones, or more, and depending of if there is a space or a cavity between the two bones. So guess what? What, is the, what do you think? What type of tissue or connective tissue uh, you're going to find between these two bones of this joint? Cartilage, right? So we're going to find cartilage. And these bones, again, there's when you're going to see when we describe this type of joints, they are touching each other. There's no space or cavity in between these two bones. They're fused, not fused, but uh, linked or kept together by a piece of cartilage. Now, we go further into this classification and we're going to 
subdivide the cartilaginous joint into two types. And this is because, remember, we have more than one type of cartilage. We have the hyaline, the elastic, and the fibrocartilage. Good thing elastic cartilage is not forming any joints, so we take that out of the picture. So that leaves us with two types of joints. If we're using hyaline cartilage in this joint, we're going to call it synchondrosis. Oh my no, another sin. So sin, a, a joint that is put together by chondrosis, a cartilage. And this one is a hyaline cartilage. How do they look like? They look something like this. So, do you remember this? Tell me that yes, you do. This, what is this? That's the epiphyseal plate on your long bones. Remember, if, don't, if you don't, go back to chapter four and review that concept. That's the piece of hyaline cartilage that remains in a growing bone. And it disappears after uh, the, um, the, um, the epiphyseal plate closures and the bone cannot grow any longer. Now, that's one type of synchondrosis. And the other type is, or another example, these are examples, are the ones located between the joint of the first rib and the maneuvering of the sternum. This joint or this piece of cartilage is hyaline cartilage because of the structure. So these ones, do you think we can move the epiphyseal plate? Not really, right? So we classify that functionally these type of joints are synarthrosis. Done? So synchondrosis are synarthrosis. <laughs> and we have two examples, epiphyseal plate and the joint between the first rib and the maneuvering of the sternum. Second type of cartilaginous joint, synthesis. So we have one synthesis, two synthesis. Got it? So in here, instead of having hyaline cartilage joining the two bones, the two pieces of bone, we have fibrocartilage. Remember that path of dense uh, cartilage with more fibers, it's more sturdy, less water. And we have the three examples, remember, on the meniscus, the intervertebral disc, and the pubic synthesis. So these two are examples of synthesis, not the ones at the knee. We'll go to describe the knee later. So intervertebral disc, remember, are these paths of fibrocartilage between the two bodies of the vertebrae. And the pubic synthesis is this path now of fibrocartilage between the two pubic bones. Um, it's just, and, and I want to emphasize this, synthesis is just this joint. Where is my cursor? Okay, this joint where the fibrocartilage is, this one. In these bones, in the hip bones and in the vertebrae, they are joined also by synovial joints. Okay, so we have more than one type of joints in these bones. Oh. So, can you believe that we can move those uh, uh, joints? We can. Can you feel it? Not really, right? This is a very slight and subtle, subtle movement that occurs in here. And for that, we classify these articulations as amphiarthrosis. Are you good? Are you ready to move to the famous star synovial joints, the one that allows us to do this? Let's go and describe that in the next video.